Ethan, what's your pregame routine? Do you even think about this the start that you're on? Do you have things that you have to do before every game? What's the superstition like as you're going through this streak? Uh, there's not really too much superstition. It's kind of just like, you know, take as less reps as you can. You know, like I, I'm just trying to lock my swing in. You know, when I feel good, I feel good. Uh, Cole Messina actually taught me that. He, he told me just take as, as less swings as you can and you're going to feel good in the game. Ever since then, it's, I've been skyrocketing. Ethan, what did it feel like to – obviously, Skeens hadn't given up a home run all year. What did it feel like to see that ball clear the fence and, and get that number one? Uh, I expected that question coming into this, but, uh, you know, it felt good. He, I, respect the, I respect the elite, and he's the elite of the elite. So, you know, I just kind of kind of took my jog around the bases, no uh, trash talk, and, you know, he, he, he got me in the second time. So, so he's even. Uh, Ethan, have you ever had eight RBIs in a game at any level? Uh, yeah, my high school, my junior high year. High school, okay. And then how about the Grand Slam? Can you kind of take us through that? And what was that moment like once you clear the fence and add four RBIs to your total there? <laughs> uh, it was just – it was surreal. You know, uh, I, I kind of just – like I heard the fans behind my back the whole game, and I was just like – I was loving it, you know, and I was feeding off the energy, and it was so much fun. Ethan, we've seen a lot of freshmen before. Once they get into conference play, maybe you start to slow down. It doesn't seem like you're slowing down. Just what's it been like for you just getting into SEC play, you know, facing the number one team in the country? Do you feel any nerves at all ever? Do you ever feel intimidated up there? Or just what's how, how have you gotten this confidence that you have? I felt uh, pretty nervous going into this game. You know, it's, it was a big game and uh, number one team in the nation. But I know I, I got my own, all my teammates behind my back. I mean, even Hicks today, he came out and threw, what, five? like shut out innings and it was amazing james coming in um you know not a clean situation after the delay you got a guy on first in the middle of a count um to get that double play and kind of settle everything down in an inning that you know in a close game after a rain delay you know who knows what's going to happen um what was did it feel like to kind of give the team that ability to settle back into the game it, uh, it felt great uh that was something i've kind of struggled with is coming in and just like breathing, calming myself down. And so to be able to come in and just feel like myself, not try to do too much, that's really all I was trying to do. And it worked out well in my favor. James, you're not a hugely emotional guy, but what was it like pitching in this environment at night with the number one team and just the sellout crowd? I could feel my feet shaking a couple of times. <laughs> it was really awesome. It was, I've looked around a few times, so it's uh, James, you made a big pitch there in the fifth, a couple guys on against, I think it was Morgan. What, do you remember anything about that sequence and kind of how big of a momentum swing was that while the game was still close? Yeah. Um, it was kind of one of those pitches where he called in, and my mindset was it's got to be in even if I hit him. I don't care. I was going in regardless. And then it just kind of worked out that it came back over the plate, and, and that, was the, that was a fun one. It, James, uh, King made the comment here just a minute ago that uh, – Ethan's a really good teammate, easy yeah. guy to pull for. Yeah. What What is it about him that, that makes him that way for you guys? I mean, he's just always the guy that's always in a good mood. You'll never see him being in a bad mood and taking it out on other people. He's always trying to uplift everybody. He's got, always got a smile on his face regardless of what's going on in the day for him. So, I mean, he's somebody that it's impossible not to root for. So all the success he's having is well-earned and deserved. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ethan, uh, Coach Kingston was talking about you guys trying to prepare for the higher velocity with the machines and, and all of that. Just what was that process like? And, I mean, have you ever faced a guy who could throw at 99, 100 miles per hour before? Uh, I have not. Yeah, I have not. But uh, we will, we were well prepared. You know, we know how we had a, we know he had a good fastball and he had great stuff. He, he like, throws all over the place, like oh, just hitting the spots and everything. So we knew going in we're going to have a tough fight. And, you know, we hopped on it and – we hopped on the machine, and the machine was throwing really hard too. Even uh, Cassis amped it up today in the cage because he was like, "It's too slow. We're gonna face God throwing hundred, you know." And uh, but it it was we were well prepared and we were ready to go. I mean, as you could tell. But uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun to see that elite of elite. Ethan, uh, talking to some scouts down there, had you turned in as a pitcher out of high school. Is it safe to say now that you're you're a hitter? And secondly, like, was there a, was there a moment where that kind of you know became clear to you? Uh, not really. I still have that option in my back pocket, but you know, I probably won't ever use it if I keep hitting like you know. But uh, I know I, I just I really like hitting, and I've always been a hitter. And I, I don't know. I just yeah, that's it. 
James is the offense, obviously, the two big home runs in the fifth, and then you have three, four, five do up, I think, on in LSU's order, Cruz, White, and then um, below. So there. how big was that to get those weak contact ground balls to the left side and then get the, the big fly out to right field just to kind of stabilize that game and keep the momentum going? Yeah, it was one of those that that wasn't the first time I had seen it. I mean, over the course of the whole time I was rehabbing and everything, everybody knows those names, and that's what I was thinking about in my head whenever I was coming back. I was trying to visualize that, and it, and it came to happen. So. Ethan, um, you talked about what you were feeling after you hit the Grand Slam, but can you describe what you were feeling before? You had already hit a home run this game, so the crowd was standing up for you. The bases were loaded. You walk up to the plate. The crowd is, like, putting all this pressure on you. What's going through your mind, and how do you handle that pressure? Actually, uh, Kingston uh, Kingston tells me, and he tells me to look at him and said, just breathe, you know, and he, that's that's our logo, our, like, our motto this year, just breathe. Breathe and don't panic, and that's what I kind of did, and, you know, I just got a pitch to hit, and I hit, I hit it. You're not thinking, like, don't mess up, don't mess up? <laughs> no. Thank you guys.